Hi friends of cocktails! Welcome to episode 3 of Zero Proof Cocktails, where I show you how to make a non-alcoholic ingredient and how to use that for a zero proof version of a classic cocktail. Today we are making non-alcoholic sweet vermouth. We'll use that to make a completely zero proof Manhattan cocktail. A great way to take care of your non-imbibing friends or just try a different approach to a classic cocktail. At the end of the episode, I'll tell you about another ingredient that you can use for alcoholic or non-alcoholic cocktails in place of citrus. But first, it's zero proof cocktail time. The classic Manhattan cocktail is made with rye or bourbon whiskey, sweet vermouth, angostura bitters and garnish with a candied cherry. Feel free to check out the episode on the history of the Manhattan cocktail. But to make it zero proof, you will need to swap out all three alcoholic ingredients. First, zero proof bourbon and zero proof bitters. We will use both aromatic and orange bitters today. I showed you how to make these a while back, so I kept them in the freezer, since they are not shelf stable like their alcoholic counterparts. And today we will make the non-alcoholic version of sweet vermouth. I'll give it a quick taste before we do. As always, don't expect this to reach the complexity level of the original or that subtle but characteristic burn you get from alcohol. With that said, this is still rich in flavor, with almost Coca-Cola-like notes. Spices, vanilla and caramel on the palate give us the subtle sensation of vermouth with its blend of acidity, sweetness and spiciness. And for the cocktail, I'll also add some saline solution, but the cherry garnish stays the same. Just like in the previous non-alcoholic episodes, I took inspiration from this book, Zero, a new approach to non-alcoholic drinks. It offers an interesting take on how to create zero-proof versions of classic cocktails by making your own DIY ingredients. As building blocks, it opens up mixology options for those that wish to stay away from alcohol. As with previous recipes, I tested the book version and adjusted it slightly, according to my taste. After the zero-proof bourbon episode, many of you pointed out that this book is hard to find, so I really hope this episode's come in handy when you want to make something without alcohol but with a little extra care and attention. Now let's go over how to make what this book calls in the style of sweet vermouth. I prefer making it in the sous vide, but if you don't have it yet, I'll also show you how to make the whole thing in a saucepan, as per the book. Here are all 20 ingredients I'm using, plus the amounts. Take a screenshot of this if it's easier, but I go through them as I add them to the sous vide bag. I'll also be using Pectinex to clarify the end result, but it's totally optional. For starters, you need to make some caramel sugar, like we did for our homemade Coca-Cola. In a small saucepan, combine 200 grams of sugar and a small amount of water, just enough to cover the sugar. Heat the mixture and use a thermometer to monitor the temperature until it reaches 185 degrees Celsius or 365 degrees Fahrenheit. Once we get to this temperature, the sugar should be perfectly caramelized for your non-vermouth. Carefully put the caramel onto parchment paper, place it on a baking sheet and allow it to cool and solidify. Be really careful when making this to avoid any burns, as the temperatures are very high. Once the caramelized sugar has completely cooled, break it into pieces and measure out 100 grams. Now we can start adding the ingredients into the sugar bag. 100 grams of caramel sugar. 70 grams of glycerol or glycerin. 780 grams of water. Use some of it to wash out the glycerol. 120 grams of verjuice. More about this medieval ingredient at the end of the episode. 2 grams of vanilla bean. Split lengthwise and seeds scraped out. 22 grams of grated ginger. 36 grams of sliced dehydrated figs. 120 grams of fresh sliced cherries with pits, 24 grams of orange peels, 18 grams of lemon peels, 22 grams of raisins, 6 grams of cassia cinnamon lightly crushed, half a gram of green cardamom crushed, half a gram of cloves, 1 gram of dried chamomile flowers, 1.2 gram of virgin rosebuds crushed, 3 grams of dried hibiscus crushed, 0.4 gram of dried tarragon, and lastly the buttering agents. 1 gram of chinzona bark and 1.6 gram of wormwood. This is what gives vermouth its name. Vacuum seal the bag with a double seal as always. Then place it in the sous vide bath set to 90 degrees Celsius or 195 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. In total, this will yield about one liter of non-alcoholic vermouth, but you can store it in smaller bottles and place them in the freezer like I did with the bourbon and bitters. Shake up the bag a few times during this one hour. This time I'll also show you the stove method, as described in the book. 
Again, the ingredients are slightly different, but this doesn't change the process described in the book. So you'll start by melting the sugar in a saucepan over medium-high heat until it's slightly burnt and just beginning to smoke. Then slowly add very small amounts of water at a time, swirling the pot between each addition to incorporate it into the sugar. Repeat this process until the liquid is no longer boiling. Then add the remaining water and all other ingredients. I'm using the same ingredients and amounts as for the sous vide method. Then cover the pot and bring the mixture to a boil, at which point you lower the heat and maintain a slow simmer for one hour. After that, remove from the heat and allow the mixture to cool completely. Then you'll filter the liquid and optionally clarify it before bottling, but I'll show that with our original batch. Once the sous vide is done, place the bag in a nice bath to chill completely. Then cut open the bag and strain the mixture through a fine mesh strainer. Squeeze out every last drop before we go to that extra step to clarify it with pectinex. For that, we'll need to first weigh out our yield. And that's because we'll add 0.2 gram of pectinex for every 100 grams of our sweet non-vermouth. I ended up with just over 1 liter, so I'm adding 2 grams of pectinex. Mix well and leave it on the counter to clarify overnight. Then you'll slowly filter the mixture through a coffee filter. First make sure you're getting clear liquid through, then transfer the filter and refilter the first part. When you get to the bottom, make sure you're not pouring in the sediments as well. Then bottle, label and you're done. This should be good in the fridge for up to a week and for several months in the freezer. With that, you're ready to make the Virgin Manhattan. You don't hear that as often as the Virgin Mojito or the Virgin Pina Colada, right? Just like you would for a classic Manhattan. Start with a chilled mixing glass. To that, you'll first add our zero bourbon, 3 ounces or 90 ml. Since there's no alcohol in any of the ingredients, the ice will not melt as much, meaning there will be less dilution. Next, 1.5 ounces or 45 ml of the zero proof sweet vermouth. As mentioned, what I won't use up in the following days, I'll probably place them in the freezer until the next time I need it. And now for the non-alcoholic bitters. Two dashes of aromatic and one dash of orange bitters. A tiny bit of citrus notes will work fine here. Lastly, like it's common practice on cocktail time, two drops of saline solution. Add ice and stir to chill and dilute. Get a really well chilled cook glass and strain the zero proof cocktail into it. Add a cocktail cherry and tell me if that doesn't look nicer than the cranberry and orange juice mix your non drinking friends usually get served at cocktail parties. Cheers! Subtle smokiness of our zero bourbon and a sweet tart nose of vermouth with hints of fruitiness and herbal essence. Beautifully intertwined in this interesting Manhattan variation, admittedly far from the classic, but it manages to flirt with it in some aspects. This cocktail is my favorite so far from the Zero Proof series. What would you like to see next? Tell me down in the comments. Also, leave a grape or apple emoji while you're there. Why? Because in today's bottom of the glass, we're talking about verjuice or verjuice. We use this tart and acidic juice today and I made it way back in 2020 for the Verjuice sidecar. And right now is the right time to make it yourself. That's because Verjuice is made from unripe sour fruits, most notably grapes and apples. It's often used as a culinary ingredient, but it can also be a locally sourced and homemade replacement for citrus juice in your cocktail. Grape Verjuice works great with brandy or white rum. Apple Verjuice would be a great addition to scotch and bourbon. Gin and vodka work great with both. So get picking unripe fruits and start verjuicing. And pick the emoji for the verjuice you'd like to try in your next cocktail. And don't forget to check out our other Zero Proof episodes or the history of the classic Manhattan if you've heard enough about non-alcoholic stuff for one day. Cheers, friends of cocktails!